Why do people help each other? It's actually a bit of a dilemma. Think about it. Every time you help someone else, they get the benefit, but you carry the cost. If you've ever lived in a flat share, you'll probably be familiar with this problem, where all the flatmates agree to do their fair share of the washing up, and yet you end up with a sink that looks like this. Why is that? It's because although everyone will get a benefit of having clean dishes, no one wants to be the one stuck doing the washing up. We call these kind of scenarios public goods games. And this structure is repeated in global problems from financial regulation through to the fishing markets. And yet, society isn't in chaos. We're actually pretty good at cooperating and helping each other. So what's going on? That's what my thesis is trying to answer. Why do we cooperate? And how do we go about making those cooperative decisions on a daily basis? So, so far, this has mostly been studied in a laboratory where people are going to be intensely aware of the fact that they're under observation. Now, the simplest laboratory game is something called the dictator game, where you give someone some money and you ask them if they want to split it with another anonymous individual. So, I decided to go and try and find a real-life example where people are being asked if they want to split their money with somebody else, people walking past homeless people in the street. And perhaps unsurprisingly, less than 1% of people gave. That's in comparison to around 50% of people in the laboratory. So what that tells us is that people do behave selfishly in a non-cooperative way when they realize that there's someone, when they realize there's, that they're not under observation. Right. So I then thought it'd be interesting to go and look at what kind of social cues influence these cooperative decisions and decided to some, study a very simple public goods game, dog bone public parks. So in this example, the individual dog walker pays a cost of picking up poo in terms of time and ugh. Um, but the benefits of that scenario go to everyone who uses the park. So I've manipulated my parks by either adding fake dog poo or removing dog poo from parks. And I'm going to and I have established the rate at which dog poo abandonment has changed. Now, the results aren't actually in yet, but the results are really important. If paying to remove dog poo from a public park doesn't actually cause any behaviour change on the part of the dog walkers, there's much less incentive for the council to pay for it. And that kind of result could potentially scale up. If you can understand why people make cooperative decisions about, say, for example, their carbon emissions from driving their car, then that could potentially have huge impacts on global problems like climate change and food wastage. Thank you very much.